thanks very much for joining us on the stream. We're going to stream the uh, top four, the semifinals of the uh, Gen Con Open for Transformers TCG. Uh, it's me, myself, Matt Smith, a designer and creative lead for Transformers TCG. And I am joined by two special competitors. Uh, we've got Jamie Madison. Jamie? Hello. How far did you get in the tournament? Uh, I made it to top 32, but unfortunately got knocked out first round, so. All right, so he qualified via the open qualifiers, yep. Yep. but unfortunately uh, was eliminated in the first elimination round. Yep, and absolutely. then we've got uh, Origins champion for the Transformers TCG, yes, sir. Stefan. Yeah, how's it going, man? Hey. Uh, how far did you get in this event? Um, I actually ended up making it to top eight. I ended up losing to, I think his name is William in the black hat. To William. And in top eight, yeah, he got me game three. Key bash and shield play on my uh, force field, and he got there, so yep. There's congrats to him. Key uh, armor destruction on the force field, and then <laughs> there got is. for some he got yep, me. Yep. Absolutely. big damage. Yeah. We know that you know in Transformers TCG, sometimes you need things like the force field to really mitigate the amount of firepower that's coming at you, and uh, the bashing shield is a real reliable way to deal with that. Perfect response. So that green pit makes it so reliable. Okay. So uh, we have our four here. We have uh, Scott Landis. He is playing three wide General Optimus deck. He's using the new General Optimus, not the uh, Optimus Battlefield Legend. Yep. And then we've got William with the Battlemaster cars. So he's using, he's trying to use car effects to for his Wheeljack and Cliff Jumper. And then he's supporting them with a, a Lionizer. He's a very powerful battle master. What do you guys think about that choice? Uh, absolutely. And we've seen Lionizer here a lot this weekend. He's been at the top tables pretty much the entire weekend. He's a fantastic character. So it'll be uh, it'll be really interesting to see if he gets all of his untapped effects to be able to continuously put damage onto Optimus and Barrage there. Exactly. So. That's one of the key um, points about that deck. It's so powerful. And then when you piece the tyranny of the Lionizer, the fact that he turns into a weapon, and then, like you said, with the untapped effects, yep. being able to get two solid attacks on um, you know the opponent's characters can really wipe them out before they get started. I would say that one of the cool things about these uh, two decks is they're kind of breakout decks for this event. Yes. Uh, people yes. were testing them beforehand, but they're really showing it off now. And it's interesting also that uh, Scott is playing the other Autobot Battlemaster, mm -hmm. which is Fire Drive. Yeah, Fire Drive is really nice. He's, um, you know, plus three attack initially, and then generally, I mean, average five attack with, you know, your two flips, you would assume you flip two oranges. So it's just about the same as Lionizer. Yep. And then the fact that he draws you a card when he attacks is very strong. Yeah, well, he usually, Gets survives, he usually survives a couple of hits, so he can tend to get you two or three cards. Exactly. And obviously, exactly. once you flip him over, you get that plus three, and you can scrap cards from your hand to get more right. damage on board. Which is insane, so, right? Yeah. It, it'll be more than Lionizer ever could. Yep. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the synergy is crazy. So. Yeah. So as is uh, custom, Scott began with that fire drive attack. Yep. Um, he went after. Oh, he went after Lionizer. So yeah, and he has bold one dangerous. too. So which is nice. Yep. Yes. From the general. From the general office. office yep. It's kind of dangerous to go after your opponent's battle master right away, but it looks like Scott's decided that. I think he's doing it because he knows his opponent's probably going to send it in like he just did. Yeah. And the fact that he's going to kill Lionizer next turn now, piece of tyranny becomes weaker for the rest of the game. Yeah. It tur yeah. It turns so, off that piece, yeah. which is very important in the matchup. Right. Which so, actually makes me think, you know, he might have should have attacked with the car if he had an untap effect. You know, if he was looking for peace and tyranny, but... Yep. Yeah, these three wide decks that are using Battlemaster support, they generally want to lead with their Battlemaster so that they can take the most damage because they're the right. character that gives you the most advantage when you've KO'd. Exactly. Uh, so, William is attacked. So, put the Plasma Burst, Reflex Circus, and one shot. Interesting. Oh, that is a really poor flip from Scott. But I don't think he cares, though, honestly. No, yeah, no, yeah. I think you want to. Not, you, you want your fire drive to go down in this scenario. So one and thing the, to note, the though, difference the difference between seven and ten, mm -hmm. or seven damage or six damage, really not a big deal right now. So That's he's true. Fine to take but that. honestly, though, one thing to uh, pay attention to: the fire drive has seven damage on it. So if William one happens to be playing one shot stand, he can get rid of it and then go attack another character. You but, know. So. But as we see on Scott's scrapyard, he also has one shot stand. So he oh, just then, put that in. Oh, wow. Within <laughs> uh, range for him. To That's very true. Yeah, it acts as a mini piece to tyranny. Yes, sir. Excellent. I agree. Yep. No, it's a perfect damage count to be sitting at front of yeah. fire drive. One shot stand is like got so much better. Yep. So these are already was. pretty aggressive decks. The games can end rather fast. Yeah. You know about the entire top four is all aggression. Turn. It went from blue to uh, yep. to straight aggression yep. from yeah, origins. We, we saw some defensive, you know, more controlling decks in the top thirty-two. Right. But as we dwindled down, um, it looks like they weren't 
fully prepared for these aggressive battle yeah. master based Well, that's the one thing that's really strong about General Optimus is that he's both really good on offense and on defense. And you can tell by Scott's hand alone there that he's got lots of orange and yeah. blue to be able to back him for attack and defense. So. And speaking of that, it's been a lot of talk over the past couple of weeks about WOTC trying to encourage mixed pip decks. Yep. And that's exactly what's happening yep. here. So that's, that's pretty cool. That is pretty you know, cool. within the plan. We want to yeah. keep it mixed up. So I'm really happy to see Scott play yeah, you know, very multiple nice. blue and orange cards. Absolutely. So he's still uh, pondering his play here. He's probably not to totally He's got to be careful here since he's not yet. playing anything with untapped effects. Whoever he sends in is, has a possibility yeah. of dying next turn, especially yep. if um, William's playing press the advantage, which he should be. I don't think he's, uh, Scott's going to send in General Optimus this turn. He's probably going to have to send in Barrage, which isn't that. Okay. So he has isn't that strong to do this, even though... He, he's putting himself kind of uh, a little out of risk for that. Yeah, for that, but that uh, was nice though. The fact that he killed to get destroyed on the next turn. Right, yeah. right, right. But, but the fact yeah. that he actually killed both is actually pretty uh, this is intense. This a pretty good trade, I think. So yeah. I, would it's, I would imagine he's gonna be sending General Optimus in now. Yeah, in this sense, yep. Yeah, I mean he's probably gonna get him for the flip effect just to be able to focus and help him out a little more on defense. So even if his opponent does get two attacks, right, at least get like to be able to focus more. We've got the same uh, fourteen effective health on both characters, so mm -hmm. he's probably gonna want to go after Cliff Jumper here. And speaking of fourteen, he needs to line. get the fourteen. That's the magic number to kill Cliff. It is the twelve uh, health and the two defense. So yep. especially when he's you're probably Go he's go, got go, go, five cards in hand. He has an opportunity to discard yeah. all of them. What is a uh, fire drive a weapon of name? Do you know it? It's a duo. Long name. It's a very long name. It's a very long name. I named the card, but I picked <laughs> it up from the toy, so I, I didn't quite commit it from yeah. that. Oh, okay. So he's probably going to be debating here if he wants to scrap enough cards to be able to take him out. Right. I'd imagine he'd be playing the reflex circuit just to give him that one. Yeah, I was going to say, armor. he still has an upgrade play. So. Yeah. But he's, he's probably counting to see if it's worth it to scrap it or if he wants to play it. Well, the real question right now is, does William have any blue icons? Because if he does have any, then he might, Scott might need to push a little bit further, discard more cards. Right. I would imagine the list is probably playing three start your engines. It would. Uh, the William? Yes. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would yeah. imagine it's a card that's so going to be in there with turbo boosters and probably boosters. possibly even ready for action. Right. So Scott chooses to discard three, three, which puts him to 12. 12 initially. Right mm. 13 and oh, 14. So he got it. So let's see if he exactly. can flip a blue. No blue. No. no blue there. That, that was uh, very, and that hurt even more because he put the saber on um, Cliff yeah. Jumper. Yeah, yeah, that was but it doesn't matter who he would have put it on. Will Jack would have died too to the same whoever, fourteen. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Whoever was holding that uh, lionizer, that fire right. steel blade. Yeah, no, that, that was a massive turn for Scott yeah. there. Yeah. The math on both battle masters, both being in one shot range, was a big deal. It, it was a huge deal. That that yeah, absolutely. This could probably basically be the end. Um, it really depends yeah, on we, we, whether Jack or not Will Jack can take out General Optimus yeah. on this attack. And William has a very uphill battle from this point. But he, I mean, if he can get to 17, what is that, 16? No, 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 I, I take that back. It's Will Jack, Will Jack's melee. So, yes. I guess he has 17 and he has to get through. That is a tough battle, yeah. Yeah. Be only at five. He needs, like, grenade launcher and Grenade reckless charge to really super charge, yeah. Reckless charge. Well, actually, uh, reckless would not be good here because barrage, barrage will turn on, yeah. So, tough spot. Um, yeah, reckless charge gives a plus four attack, but right. it does three damage to the attacker at the end, at of, the the end attack, of the turn, right? Which would then turn on barrage's bot ability, which gives bold two if attacking a damaged character. Yep, right absolutely. now, Will Jack's not damaged, so he's at least going to take a little bit less damage from barrage, right? It's a really so big what is the? Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're, you're good. good. Yeah, that's. Well, what is the reason for the uh, cards over the KO characters? Uh, I think that's just for our streamers at home to. Okay. Be, just I think to be more clear. For them. Okay. Yeah. I think I think the other part of it is it does help with glare. So. That is true. Yeah, yeah that's true. I like that top down. I'm gonna have to give me a top down tripod. It's nice. I'll tell you, I have a top down setup at home. Yeah. Love it to death. Okay. Love it to Helped death. Helps with a lot of glare. Absolutely. Okay. So he's going for the grenade launcher. Oh, so that's right. Play. Supercharge is so better he, in that situation. Yep. That's the best uh, boost weapon in that situation. So or pretty, action. Yeah, this is pretty much the best thing he can try to do. Right. Let's see if his uh, battle flips favor yeah, what yeah, he's feel a little lucky here. Yeah, his goal here is to one shot this Optimus Prime. So oh. he's hit a double orange. He's got one blue. Oh, he might get there. Oh, oh yeah, he's getting orange. there. It looks like there's a yeah, lot that's... of damage getting through the door. So, how so uh, Scott has uh, four defense. Four defense against eight, nine, so ten, to get to 18. Uh, 19. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's Will it. Jack's See, they're doing the base math off of Wheeljack, too. So this is enough to take out that Optimus. Just double-checking the math. Here. Where is the dampening field? 
It is pretty interesting though that this is game one and he does have dampening field in his main board. Right. Yes. So he's right. definitely this... anticipating a lot of aggression. They are going slugging into out right today. now. It's really useful against characters like a kickback out of the and uh, from the lionizer he gets four four. Yep. So if uh, oh, oh Scott this card ooh. Looks like this this will probably wow. be enough to get back out. Oh, yeah, that's actually fourteen. Charge, that's enough. Just yeah. about. He he does. Oh wow. So if he flips a blue, he lives. Oh, oh, he, he did get that blue. blue. Is that a start your engines? Oh. He flipped two. He even. flipped two. Wow. So right and then he takes he three damage. Sort of hand that he yes. Wow. Look at that. Last turn, yeah. He can take this game. I, I do. I do. I, do. I, I think it. He, well, Barrage has the eight damage or eight damage uh, left, rather. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and he, oh and he, he, he does run even some blues. That good of a hand. Yeah. If he has at least an attack boost card or a weapon, which I'm sure he does. He has four cards. Oh, I saw Quartermaster in his hand. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Quartermaster can back. Oh yeah. It is. And. It looks like William, despite looking really like he wasn't going to take it, yeah, right. he was, he's going to be able to pull this out. That really, Isn't that, that something? turn taking out that That's crazy. But I do wheel agree with Scott's play, though. He, he did have to go all in on that wheel jack that turn because right. you have to worry about the crackback. So that was definitely his one play to oh, yeah. pull that game I out. I think yeah. Scott's play was optimal. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Just, I mean, just flip two blues on uh, on his attack. And that happened to me yep. a lot of times, yep. so I know the feeling. Yeah, absolutely. And then yep. and then that wheel jack not being damaged turned off the bolt was right. very relevant that helped. as well. Yep. That helped. Actually, it looks like even without those two bolts, he would have survived with one health left, wheel jack. So. Oh, yeah. See, press the advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was all about what yeah, press is going to seal the deal. That's, that's it right there. Yeah. Scott flipped were the real Oh, yeah, right. Right. That's what I mentioned. Yep, yep, definitely. And it is really interesting that he did value the press the advantage more than the quartermaster well, for bringing back the bolt. If he didn't have another weapon, then because he, he threw down another. Uh, oh no, he. We well, only had one it's, defense, it's, it's like no matter what, yeah. Yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but well, he does have blues on the list, guaranteed. so yeah. So it was to hit. But I'm saying those two another. blues go down, so then he still yep. only has the one yep, defense still. So, yep. All what right, a turn so of events! That was crazy. William Wellman with his uh, battle masters card. Got game one. Took the first game. Yeah. This is gonna be two out of three. This deck is ridiculous. I played this deck. I um, the version I played played Lieutenant B, um, mm -hmm. Cliff Jumper, and Fire Drive, and um, it, it, a lot of finesse, a lot of combos, stuff like that. This version right here is straight brute force. This yeah, is I the mean, first it, one I played, yeah. and it, it's very good. It it's is, ridiculous. It, it's a glass house turned sideways. Yeah, and it gets yeah. It done. And then uh, it can defend well. It has so much health across the board. What is that? Is that uh, looks like looking at 13, the sideboard, 13, 12, 33 health across the board. It is 33 health. Looking at the sideboard, William's got some Energon axes, which have blue battle icons. Yep. Um, what what do we think he might might do here? I know Scott's got a, probably got a plan, or maybe he's going to stick with what he's doing. To be honest with you, it's kind of tough to say what decide against uh, Scott today. Yeah, to be honest with you, it, I don't. It's, it's a, such a so for the viewers at home, uh, players are allowed to bring ten battle cards as their sideboard, mm -hmm. and then one character that's less than nineteen stars, which covers almost every character. Uh, so they have the opportunity to swap out some of their stuff for a different character, which can really change the strategy of their deck. And then when it comes to these kind of games, really only Scott has to decide board when it comes to this matchup because William is ahead of game. It doesn't really hurt him to keep right. his main board because he still has a third chance if he yeah. has to side board. Correct. But Scott being uh, the loser of that game means that he gets to decide on what team he's playing after William has locked in what he's mm -hmm. doing, which yeah. is a nice little bit of information to, to help him in right. that second game because it's on the back heel. To make it a little yeah. even, try to push through a third game, yep. you yeah. make it yeah, definitely. Yeah. It is one thing that's really nice when you get to see if your punt does make that change. You can completely change what your sideboard what plan decide. was going to do Correct. versus, you know, if you win your sideboard and go into it blind. Definitely. So while they're, they're shuffling here, uh, Jamie, can I get a little introduction for the viewers? So for the viewers, uh, my name is Jamie Madison. I run Powered by Primus. It is a YouTube channel obviously dedicated to everything Transformers TCG. We also do have a website, which is PoweredByPrimus.com as well. We do uh, a shop on there and a bunch of articles and stuff like that. So Excellent. And you're from? I'm from Colorado. Colorado. Yep, I'm with the Colorado, Colorado group. Colorado yep, we, had, we had five people show up. Three made it into the top 32. So it was exactly. it was, it was a good like result for us. Very nice. Yeah. And Stefan. Well, I'm one of one because it's just yeah, me. It's just <laughs> but I, <laughs> the Highland. Yeah. yeah. But um, S. Datakuma, that's my channel. And um, I played a lot of heavy Yu-Gi-Oh years ago. Yeah. But I just kept the channel. And I changed the name a little bit and, um, you know, started doing Transformers. Yeah. A friend got me into the game about six, seven months ago. Said, hey, come over and just, you know, see the new game, you know. Yeah. And um, I love Transformers. And, uh, it's worked out well for you. Yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> so he showed, showed me how to play, and I'm like, yo, this is actually cool. Went home, went on the uh, Hasbro website or whatever, and the one where Optimus and Megatron are talking to each yeah, other yeah, as they're doing yeah, the battle. Yeah, I was so into it. It was so cool. That. And I was hooked, so. Awesome. In the back, uh, we're not going to be showing this game quite yet. It's the other uh, semifinal match, and that's going to be Bugs by Blaine Budlitz, and then uh, versus Four Light Cars 
which, okay. which that, one if we can get an update the, the, on that. That four-way cars matches is definitely something that we're going to have to talk about at yeah. some point because it, I, it, it is truly a a very unique, yeah. amazing thing. It I absolutely agree. is. Yeah. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get it on camera quite. You know, it depends yeah. on how this match goes. Right. But it, it's a super interesting thing. He's playing the Red Alert from the starter deck, which is excellent. It's a, a vanilla character. has yeah. no abilities, but yeah. it still gets the job done. Yeah. And uh, one, one reason to go 4-wide with the Cars deck is it allows you to have more control when you're against another 4-wide deck, like uh, Bugs, but even greater control against another 3-wide deck. You get right. to pick yep. who you put out to uh, be attacked by your opponent. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, just, it just allows you to really choose where you want to have your opponent forced to be put damage in those kind of situations, which is really relevant. Now I gotta say, this turn could be crucial because William did it to me twice. Him going second and possibly having Peace to Tyranny in his hand. Oh, if he yeah. has that and an untap effect, he can go kill Fire Drive almost easily, almost. Yep. And, and then, then untap the and then have free range at Barrage or Optimus. Yep. So, and if he can KO that character too, Scott's really behind. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. There's oh, it looks like it's not happening. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's throwing him out there. So. Oh, yep. two of them. Right oh, well, there's that. <laughs> which is always a good Sign, you get a lot yeah, of extra oh, damage, but that means he's not going to be playing anymore. Where's the wow. steamroll? He really went all in. <laughs> that fire drive is more than dead. Where's the steamroll for this turn? Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I think in both these matchups, I think it's the right call to try to take out the Battle Master as fast as possible. I really don't think you can afford to, 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 wait, yeah. to leave it out there and then have something like the one shell style, you know, stand that we saw last yeah. one or a piece or tyranny resolve. Yeah, the piece turn is just ridiculous. It, it, like. it's, it, it's, it's, way, it's way more damaging to actually have that resolve than it is just to have the right. other player with the weapon. And cars use it the best because of the untap effect. Absolutely. So, yep. Yeah, if, if you it. leave those Battle Masters standing, you give your opponent an opportunity to use them on cards like Peace of Tyranny, One Shall Stand, One Shall Fall, mm -hmm. or they just get to attack with it more. Right. And Absolutely. you don't want you don't want to take that damage either. That's yep. why bugs are so good, because they have more attacks they than most more decks. Yep. Yep. They have more buckets additionally to take damage, which Correct. is yes, very Absolutely. useful, you know, right. when you do all that too it, much overkill damage mm -hmm. on your front, you just kind of waste your resources. Mm -hmm. It's one thing I saw actually a lot this weekend was a lot of four wide decks, and a, a lot more than I assumed would have been here. There was mm -hmm. lots of combinations of cards and teams that were that right. were here. Yep. When the numbers work out, you know, four wide can be. We we kind of consider four and three to be you know the average. That's where a lot of decks should sit, and then you go a little bit more extreme when you play two or five. Yeah. So he got bashing shield. And he traded a uh, looks like enforcement batons for the bashing shield. On his, right. uh, okay. Scott's going to take his uh, yeah. second turn Ooh. here. So, and just missing out on these force fields at all. So, and then even then, you know what? He's actually in the uh, yeah. tight situation no matter what because let's say he doesn't kill the lionizer if yeah. William has that last piece of tyranny. Yeah, right. You know, things can get crazy. Yep. So, so it was an interesting play then because if he if he feels like his barrage isn't going to make it, he might have been better to use his one shell stand, one shell fall to at least. You know, use some of that three damage on his barrage. Well. No, absolutely, because yeah, here but um, he chose treasure hunt, so I'm wondering what he might. Uh, do. He, so you're saying to put three damage on the lion? Um, no, no, to put three damage on barrage, and then you could have and on and who? Then a wheeljack or something. Oh, okay, just okay, okay. Some, some, just help. to get a little bit of value to help in the later, yeah. end, if he thinks that his barrage is going to be. I, I, in this situation, he's definitely valuing his optimus as being the bigger threat. Right. On hit maybe on he was his side. For any armor. Right. Uh, it's possible he was definitely looking for an armor there. Uh, he did pass one up earlier for a uh, bashing shield, but it looks like he's now getting ready to possibly get rid of the bashing shield for to go into that. Uh, I think that he's gonna master. he's gonna use this extra defense boost. I think he's gonna attack with General Optimus. I th it's the yeah. most likely to survive in this scenario, and that's really what he needs to happen. Right. He's gonna be yeah. able to I can't I can't remember if he chose to flip barrage uh, for this turn or if he has yet to do a flip for the turn. Oh um, yeah. Because absolutely. you usually want to always throw Optimus out in uh, in his bot mode, bot mode and not in his alt mode just because you do get that focus, which allows this you to come to the second turn. So okay, he would so, probably yeah. flip barrage on his first. Yes. Turn. It's pretty typical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because fire drive starts you in can't his flip perfect fire mode. Drive, so. <laughs> So he's gonna flip him back. Okay, he wants the extra. Trying to, uh, he's yeah. Try, yeah, he's trying to. Yep. Try, well, he's trying to lower the damage so he doesn't proc and possibly kill Lionizer by flipping over well, the other side. He loses two damage on the. the are you bot sure? Because he just discarded three cards. Yeah, he. he oh, so he. Okay, I guess yeah. That piece of tyranny player just. Yeah, he can't take the chance of him having the yeah. last one in his hand. I he's think going he just. In. He knew he could kill him, and if he can, or he could KO yeah. uh, the Lionizer. So if he could get that one more defense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that one defense. <laughs> it, it might do something. The the, the one is very real. I it, I, I it was I was knocked out of top. 32 because my opponent's Optimus Prime lived with one health, so that one is very real. Cards like Zap and the Arm Hovercraft and all the cards when I first started the game, I thought they were so bad because I was like, yeah. I want these Absolutely. power cards like 
launch, yeah. you know, grenade launch and all that. Yeah. Then I understood why they're good. Yeah. No, Zap, know, so. Zap, uh, I designed Zap to basically be as weak as it could while still being played. Like right. Yeah, 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 right? for sure. Yeah. Because well, it's, it, trying, it's kind yeah. of a baseline. And yeah. I just found that, you know, oftentimes you leave on that one health and that can really it turn matters, the tide right? if you yeah. can. Even like Scrap Mill. Like yeah. cars oh, like I, Zap. I, like, I, I main deck three all weekend and nice. I use Zap multiple times on Scrap Mill alone. Yeah, right. Yeah, so you don't have to waste three attacks until. Absolutely. It is one of the weaker looking cards, but almost a staple. Right, right. Yeah. But one thing I noticed bugs do a lot is if you get the two attacks on him, then when he has one health left, they'll piece it. And then, yeah. like, then you yeah. know, so. It, Good it, old piece it, of tyranny. So you'd rather zap it before that happens. Yeah, well, well, I, mean, I mean, even just flipping Scrabble back over and tapping down. Or that, your or that, that yeah. could almost be a piece Depending of on the situation, and, and, yeah. And it, yeah, it, it does very damaging stuff, so. So I can't really tell what he, oh, it looks like a dampening field and a, uh, something that he discarded for confidence. Okay. wonder what he's searching for for this turn. Maybe a precedent advantage? Uh, it's entirely possible he's going for press that the two armor is actually super yeah. relevant on Barrage. So it looks oh, like he either got it or it had is. it in yeah. hand. So. What I really like about Leo in his deck is putting Leo on Cliff Jumper it makes them both effectively wheeljack pretty much. Yes, yes. You know, wheeljack yeah. is definitely the harder wheel hitter jack. out of the two. So yeah. you want to spread your resources yeah. by putting your battle master on yeah. Cliff Jumper. Right. And, and if if he can manage to get rid of this barrage here, he just played an enforcement baton and that got rid of the ion That's master. So, good. Yeah. so once he goes to flip, so he so he's going all in here with Cliff Jumper, and if he can get rid of this barrage, this is going to be a this is going to be a pretty Ooh, big turn. Very for nice William. flip though. A, a so yeah. three defense flip. total. We'll see what. Uh, looks like he's. Oh, but he still might get there though. Yeah, well, I mean, with, with that press the advantage, I think it's yeah, going to get the job done. Yeah, still only, yep. It looks like uh, the press yeah, the advantage gone. definitely it, it, was. Get the job done. That was the difference. Without that card, uh, Barrage would have lived. Yep. And it's really smart that he chose to go with Cliff Trumper first because he's right. obviously. He probably has more in his hand that's going to be able to get Cliff Trumper to deal more damage, and it has that built in bold three, so right. he's, he's got to run through that Optimus. So, uh, this has been. Rather interesting. It looks like uh, this match is kind of only getting to three turns each time. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and that's, that's kind of what happens when players both go all in aggressively. Right. Right? Absolutely. Like they, yep. The kind of Scott has a little bit of mitigation, Ooh. but really he's just trying to do the most damage he can as quickly as possible. Okay, so yep. he's gonna um, put himself in a bind here because it's gonna make it easier for Wheeljack to kill Optimus next turn. Yeah, well, his, he's probably really valuing if he doesn't get rid of his cliff jumper, the game's probably well, over. It, it, for yeah. sure, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, based but I'm just looking towards the future. Absolutely. It's like he's making it easier. I mean, I guess he has the uh, fashion shield uh, to help Scott's with defense. Hand, yeah. It looks but. like he really needs to, to pump See, his the character, and those are the only the only yeah. pump spells he has does damage back to his now, The interesting right. thing is he had a bashing shield in hand, and he chose not to play it. So I wonder if he does think that there are force fields in William's deck, because yeah, that so could have given him yeah. one extra armor there. And I, yep. That's and you know what? He didn't get there either. So yeah. if William has an untap effect, it's definitely over. Yeah. Uh, I would say that's almost unnecessary at this point. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's but, mean. Yeah. It's pretty mean. Scott does have a chance with a one shell stand, one shell fall to finish off Cliff Jumper right. if he can somehow. If Will Jack doesn't put him at 11. But, oh, yeah. and then William did draw an oh, yeah. untap effect. So yeah, 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 yeah he just yeah, top decked that turbo booster, so that would probably be enough to get the job done, especially with having that weapon on there with the bolt right. four. Yeah. That's a lot of damage. Five bold in. three and then five bold four. Well, six yeah. bold four. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, that's a lot. Wheel Jack's effects. He's going with the zap as well zap. to make sure he gets the job done here. <laughs> you can tell William's shaking. He's definitely nervous. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. You know, Scott is a player one for the saber. Player. Yeah. Um, William has played very well, but you know, whenever you're against a really strong player, you get a little nervous. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the crazy part is even looking at this this cars deck that William has. It's already super powerful, but I see he's got a mounted missile in there, so he still has a star. Isn't that spot something? Available. You know, that after is, all that, that's insane. After all that, still has a star. Yep, very true. There's hey, a handshake, and that gets congratulations. it done. All right, so congrats to Scott. You know, making top four. It's an excellent placement in, in this uh, Gen Con. Absolutely. Open. Yeah. Four of thirty-two, and not only that, it's a single elimination for the top thirty-two. Which right. Yeah, which is really important. It can be definitely. really difficult to get through a single elimination event like that. Yeah, right? well, and a, lot, and a lot of it's really matchup dependent. And, and, you know, I he, love that deck. I, very well. I'm sorry. Go no, go ahead. I'm so excited for him. No, I'm absolutely. <laughs> no, I, I, I am really excited to see that, that deck do well. Oh, that and, deck and is William, so ridiculous. William 2 0 like that. I mean, yeah. that, it just goes to show the power that that deck has. Even right. going up against Battlefield, or sorry, Battlefield Legend, but going up against General Optimus with Blue, it right. was still enough to get it so done. Speaking of, I'm glad you said Speaking that. Of, People yeah. were talking about Battlefield Legend, how they're sick of it on yeah. Facebook for I don't know how long. Here's well, your it's still Optimus, cards, but absolutely. it's not Battlefield Legend. So as you can nope. see, yep. it's not all about Battlefield Legend. He's been promoted to General. Yeah. Yep. Right? Yep. 
Well, and that, yep. and that was one thing this weekend. There was actually a lot less play for Battlefield Legends. Yeah, it yeah. Really was. The three wide deck was very heavy though, and I think it, they had it, a lot it, of influence yeah. from. Oh, so okay, looks we got like the other. moved over to uh, cool. the other top four match, and so four wide cards to game one. We've only yep. had one game so far. Yeah, and it looks like the four wide card deck. Cars are all over this event. All, so all over this. Event. All over the event. Blaine's, Blaine is playing the uh, Insecticons, yep. the aggro variety. It's a, one of the best aggro decks, absolutely. Um, we didn't see much of it in uh, the top tables. There were, I think, four in the top 32, and they all dwindled down. Um, but like we were talking about at the start of this, Kevin's deck kind of has a unique advantage compared to other cards decks against a deck like Insect. The, the thing that makes it really powerful is just Cliff Jumper being able to draw so many cards and really get huge card advantage early game. Right. It, it really makes a huge difference, so. Uh, and while this is, I would consider this deck a four wide cards deck, it does have one motorcycle in it, that's RC. Yep. It's kind of tough to fit another car into the lineup, but it is predominantly car based. Uh, RC is just a really good support character. And I thought he was playing a red alert from the new set. He, no, he told no, me, yeah, no, he no, said, no, this is starter deck red alert. It is starter red alert. Okay. It's got no abilities, but it's yep. got a really awesome. I mean, five I mean, attack. Yeah, yeah, five it's, a lot. it's five attack for six stars, and that, that's Eight, a pretty that's solid amount. Yeah, and that six star, that helps so much. Yep, yeah, definitely, for sure. He's also a. Red Alert is also one of the only uh, ranged characters. Well, he's the only ranged car at six. Currently. Oh, and okay. Is he ranged on both sides too? Right? I think. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's wow. intended. Nice. Uh, right I'm, now, I want I want you to scrounge that. for all the pieces. If you can't, if you need a ranged car, you gotta wow. go. You gotta wow. go to the there you go. Deck. Yeah, six stars are uh, kind of um, those um, hidden gems because like I played a Shockwave deck that plays Swoop. Yeah. And flame works. Yeah. It's swoop. He's a specialist. Five stars. Yeah. He's a tank. It's pretty nice. Swoop's yep. a lot like Red Alert, except for he's got an ability on one side. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Moving damage. Yeah. Yep. Which is really relevant in the bug matchup. Yes. yes. Super yes, relevant. Yeah, Super definitely. relevant to deal with that scrapnel. So what else makes the uh, Insecticon deck so good? So like, the, the Insecticon deck is so good because it actually has a lot of room for I don't want to say error, but a lot of room for if it doesn't play the way it's supposed to. All play. right, bro. So good job, Scott. A lot of power there. Yeah, yeah there's, there's so much power there. Even on bad flips, it does extremely well. No matter what card it draws, it just seems to always be performing at the top of the aggro food chain. That thing, it, it, is, it is a powerhouse of a deck. I'd say that's largely the case because of the synergies within the Insecticon. To be right? honest with Absolutely. you, I just chalk it up to having four characters and I still function. To be honest with you, having an extra character matters a lot. Now, of course, in this matchup, he's pretty even, but like yes. most against most other three wide decks, having that extra character is just such a yeah. big advantage. I still function is a very powerful card. Very. Having four characters yeah. just means it's going to be live for you yeah. to use yeah. more frequently. Yeah. I think a lot of games come down to who can get more attacks. And then like, yep. if you see I still function, that's five attacks now. Yep. Like, yep. And, and then it, additionally, we've got Swarm on the battlefield. This is an Insecticon yeah. card. It says uh, flip the top card of your battle deck for each Insecticon you begin the game with. Right. Four in most cases. Mm -hmm. And then for each orange icon, your opponent places a dam or deals a damage to one of their own characters. One at a time, yep. And yeah, then for each blue icon, you also get to repair some. But mm -hmm. this is a fully aggressive deck, so he's just looking yeah, to do yeah. as much damage right. as You won't be possible. finding any blue in there for sure. But I mean, it also does even count for double oranges. So if you you know happen to get really crazy and you flip double oranges in there, those still count as well. So yep, they could do a lot of damage. It, it could do, do a lot of damage. It could do up to eight. Yep. Right at most. And yep. this, that's a huge. That's a swing. huge number. Now whites, white icons don't uh, <laughs> impact here. Yeah, white icons are only used on the battle when attacking or defending, but not when used for something like swarm. Yep, absolutely. Deactivated. Okay, that's what that says. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> It was really interesting too, though, when Kevin did swing in with that RC, he did throw her out in bot mode. Yeah. Right. So one other thing, uh, one of the synergies Insecticons has is with Kickback. Kickback has zero attack, but he flips two additional battle cards when attacking for each Insecticon. And start the game. The game with, that, yeah. that, that is not considered bold, yes. which is which is very relevant. Yes. It's separate yes. from bold, so effects like Acid Storm won't be able to prevent it. Yep. And then additionally. It just means that uh, he's flipping Ooh. eight cards when he attacks. Nice. Right? Very good. I love that card. New card and, and, set. And it also works very well in this situation. Yeah. You can squish them like eight, bugs. Yep, eight oh, yes. is that magic number. So yep. this is excellent so, right here with so arm play, graph, potentially. Squish them like bugs, which is going to allow... What, if Cliff Jumper damages the target, he's going to do one damage additionally to each of the Insecticons here, Right. Which is especially relevant because Scrapnel, with seven health, only ha has six damage on him right now. Yep. yep so it's going to finish off. So it's going to yeah. kill him. He's going to get a double KO Two for here. one. Very strong. I made deck three in my deck. I love that deck card so much right absolutely. now. Absolutely, <laughs> it's so good. 
And then it deals another damage to the character it attacked. If it didn't kill it and it yes. would live by yep. one, yep. it would yeah, deal it, an additional. It, it, it's for each character that has fewer stars right. than the attacker. Mm -hmm. So this is this is looking really close. Um, Blaine's Insecticons do have some good damage. Prowl has one health left. Uh, maybe a Zap could finish him off. Cliff Jumper has one damage on, which is very relevant because Barrage is likely going to try to take him right. out. Yep. Something to uh, mention about the oh, RC2, like, I think. Looking in Blaine's hand, there is an ISO function. Like he does have an about. ISO function in hand. So what, 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 and actually what that'll do is that'll help him not to, uh, well I take that back, he has two characters tapped. If um, Kevin had an untap effect, he would be able to get two attacks next turn if he would just attack with the barrage. Yep. But uh, pulling the eyes to a function makes him still have one untapped character. Yep. So he can only get one attack, Kevin. And he does have an untapped effect, as we can see. Yeah, yeah, he does. Hand, so. But what I was saying about the RC is I guess she's actually better in that mode versus bugs. Like you don't need to get to her other mode for the pierce. Yeah, but she has two attacks, she has one yes. more attack, and her attack is gonna be her attack no matter what. Yeah. And the thing the that bugs we might, are fragile. The thing we might not have seen before we did get over to this match is he may flip RC into that mode to be able to repair one from each of his characters right. as well. Yeah, so. yeah, very true. Yep, when RC goes back to alt mode, she will repair one from each of your characters. So Barrage way. definitely needs to kill the cliff jumper here, otherwise yep. that untap effect but will be very good next turn. He's got a lot of help. He's got a reckless charge and the erratic lightning. They both, should be enough both to get cards it that really lower yeah. your defense, they're extremely aggressive. But but uh no, it's it can definitely be worth it. No, that, that was a really important turn. If he didn't take out that cliff jumper, he was gonna be in a pretty bad spot. Definitely. So, so but what this does like, now, oh go ahead, sorry. It looks like Blaine is saving that ice still function. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He's definitely waiting for the turn that he can activate it and wants to try to finish the game on the same turn with it. Is that RC undamaged? So the RC is undamaged. So the RC is undamaged. Um, uh -huh. He's in a situation this turn where, okay, he made the barrage easier to kill. If Prowl can kill the um, barrage this turn, it's going to put uh, Kevin in a very good position because he's going to be left with Cliff or um, yeah. uh, Chop Shot versus Prowl and a full, uh, yeah. fully so, healed RC. So. so if Prowl comes in and kills the barrage, oh, so there's nothing to untap. That was really key. Blaine right. Able to. Uh, yeah. KO that cliff jumper so that the untap effects are now kind of. But he will be able to get a bowl too if he flips the uh, prowl yeah. back. And he has supercharge and power so. punch. That's more than enough to. Yes. Looks seems like it. Yes, it's definitely down. a really tight game. Yeah. 1, the, the, the one the one advantage to these orange matchups that's really beneficial is that you don't have to try to do additional math on possible blue flips. Right. You always just take into effect whatever the defense is. So Especially if you can get to that bugs. number, right. then, then you're taking. But care that's of. that's a really good opportunity to sneak a few blues. In. Absolutely. Really yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I played against a bug player that played uh, Scoundrels Blaster uh, this weekend too. So. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, that was Blaine, good card. actually. I believe. Is I it looked at his deck list earlier today, and it had a couple Scoundrels Blasters. Oh, there. interesting. Or, right. or at least it was in the last event. Well, actually, it might not have been. Was that in, route, in the first, in the first open? I'll be honest with you, I don't remember. Okay. I, 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 I played against them, but you know. yeah. Um, something that's a little bit of an error here, that Turbo Boosters is on Prowl, he's not a car right now. Yes. So it shouldn't be equipped unless he flipped the Prowl back to alt mode. Yep. Yes, so absolutely. So that's actually a... So, um, we should probably... Say something, okay, before they... Well, if we can. Can you stop them real quick? They, uh, he, he has a Turbo Booster on Prowl, it's not a car. You can't put the Turbo Booster on a not car. It has so cars only. So that's one of those. Uh, it looks, it looks, like, they, it looks like they might be looking at it now. It already, okay. It's a very powerful upgrade, the turbo yeah. boosters. Yeah. But it, it probably didn't matter, but still, it I mean, it's relevant. It can only be on a car, and that means you have to be in your actual car mode. Yeah. For that to happen. So it looks like he's debating if he wanted to. Uh, yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're looking at it now. So it looks like they're okay with leaving it on currently? In the rules, it did say if something that is played or done, like if I play Reckless Charge and I attack, and then two or three turns go by, and then yes. I remember yep. that you're supposed to have three, technically yep. it's just let go at that point. Yeah, as, yeah. as long as I understood the rules correctly, it kind of just doesn't happen at yes. that point because we yes. both forgot. Yeah, so, rewinding can be very difficult in games yeah. like this. It's, it's, it's very technical. both players to maintain the game state. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not fully your responsibility as a opponent, but you know, in order to keep a game played well and good, you, you should pay attention both right. sides. Yeah, I, I, would, I would imagine here the max that they'll do is just give them a warning and they'll probably continue playing yeah. as normal. Right. And if you get, you know, as, as warnings add up, they eventually can lead to harsher penalties like game yep. losses or match losses yep. or even DQs. Um, yep. But really it's just kind of a, a thing to make sure things are mistakes rather than intentional, right? Yes, absolutely. And I think either way here, he was going to be able to have the damage on board to get it done, so I don't think the one point was that relevant. Right. So, 
So are they still pause play right now, or uh, can't tell? It looks like they're back in play, and it looks okay. like Blaine is currently debating on what he wants to do. Okay. Oh, okay. So he's in a tough situation so here. I don't even... Oh, go ahead. It's a tough situation because even if he uses his eyes still function, uh, his opponent's remaining character is still going to be able to attack his chop shot. Sometimes eyes still function can help prevent you know your last active character from getting KO'd because right. they have to attack another tap character. But Blake doesn't have any right now. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I was going to mention. Oh, yep. So what happens, what needs to happen now is RC just has to get to, uh, was that, 8, I guess? Yeah. Because the Chop Shop has one damage counter on it. Well, so if he flips RC potentially and then... If know, RC flips, yeah. Then yeah, then all he needs is 8 for sure, right? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if he stays that in that mode, then that 2 armor would matter. It, it makes a huge difference. Right, yeah. you know, so... He also gives uh, Blade an opportunity to flip the blue if he stays in this mode. Mm -hmm. Which will be irrelevant if yes. he's on RC's bot mode, which grants all of RC's attack pierce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it looks like uh, Blaine's pretty deep in the tank. This is, you know, he, he's already lost a game here. This is potentially one of the last turns he can have. So it, it's important to take your time. Um, we're not really crunched on time right now, so it's important that he uh, thinks through his plays and make sure that he can do the best he can. Yeah, so it's one advantage to playing aggressive versus aggressive. The, the, the time clock usually isn't that much of a deal for you, so which, which removes a lot of stress from your game. So it looks like they are still talking about the play. Uh, judge is talking to him now, so. I feel like it should only be a warning at most, especially because that one damage didn't make or break, I don't think, I, that I attack agree. I agree. on top of that, so. Yeah. It, it, yeah. The, the, the debate might be just to scrap the card or maybe possibly put the card back into his hand, which is where it was at originally, so right. it, it may be just trying to figure out where that turbo booster is going to go from Definitely. Here. Yeah, it, it is. It, uh, Transformers is a do-what-you-can game when you play cards, so it is possible that the ruling could be that he's played Turbo Boosters and can't put it on a character, and yeah. we'll have to scrap it. So it looks like Stefan here is going to find out what's going on with the, with the game currently. I'm just curious if maybe that one damage actually did make a difference when it came to the attack, and they, they might have to back that out a lot. But it looked like it was more than enough even before the one, but it yeah. might it might have been that one that makes the difference. So. Pr Prowl did have a uh, supercharge there, so that does seem like it should do a good amount of damage. Absolutely. Um, I think that uh, Blaine's uh, Barrage had seven health left with one defense, so uh, Kevin would have had to have done eight. Yes. Assuming Blaine didn't flip any Okay, so it was just uh, revealed to me by uh, John Temple that the game state is going to stay as it is because information was revealed during the attack. So since uh, information was revealed, they're going to let the game state stay we as is. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. 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 We, can't, yep. we can't rewind it at this point. And as I said earlier, I was confirming with him with the reckless charge thing. If I play a reckless charge on Wheeljack and attack and then like two turns each later, you yep. know, you remember that I was supposed to take three. Yep. Technically just doesn't happen because it should have yes. happened at the end of that turn. Yes. Yeah, it's so. really hard to backtrack those situations. Okay. So, really, don't try to do that intentionally. That's cheating. If of course. If, yes. it's, if, it's, if it's discovered by a judge that you're cheating, yeah. then you will be disqualified. And one thing I've seen some players do is just put the three damage on from like Reckless Charge at the beginning of the attack uh, yes. so they don't forget. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are some situations where you attack using Reckless Charge and you win the game before that happens. So, yep. in those situations, but you want to put it after, but... There, there's no forgetting in those instances. Absolutely. The game's over before the, it yeah, happens. The, the, game, the game is <laughs> over, so... He's digging through his scrap pile here. Wants this, he wants to know if there are any blues. Right? Yeah, I was going to say, I imagine he's probably looking for blues, or he's probably looking for a specific card, maybe grenade launchers because of that RC or something. Right. There, there, there might be a, a specific weapon that he's looking for. Yeah, that is super relevant because that kind of is how he's going to decide maybe he should attack with an ice stuff function character yeah. or his actual shop shot. Or, no. It's also pretty interesting that this turn he chose still not to use that ice stuff function. Uh, just because they're going to get the reset here, so I don't think it would matter too much because the opponent can go into Chop Shop anyway, but he's, well, so he's still holding on to that. Here's the, here's the uh, oh, yeah, it, well, this is the thing. He needs a larger amount of damage to KO RC, 
so he can get that barrage back with Ice Touch. Right, which so is he's going to want to hold it. Right, right. Because he really needs to KO that yeah. Prowl now. Yeah. But he only has one health left, so any attack will do. Right, right. I did see a uh, power punch in Kevin's hand, so if he has power, oh, okay. Well, I well, see well, a supercharge. Well, 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 and that was my debate with it. Did you possibly want to use the Ice function there to try to KO the RC, who you know has the access to that Pierce? Yeah. And then right. only leave the Prowl alive, or if you. I guess who would you Ice Touch function probably kick back because barrage I, won't I'd get probably, the bolt. Yeah, so. Yeah, I would have probably brought back kick back. Oh my. And that's yeah, I like to say I saw power punch and then I saw supercharge. This might be it. Yeah. So I think either way it would have gotten the job done, but I think I would have personally brought back something to get rid of the RC just because her pierce it right. does reduce that two armor. And it, even with the bashing shield, RC doesn't care about the that, that armor amount, so she's going to be getting in here for a lot of damage. Yep. Unless right. there's so that's a really start. Poor flips. It looks like that white can extend his flip. So. Opportunity here. So where are you sitting at five? He just needs to get two more. Six, there's one. Seven, there it is. Eight. All right, that's it. Yep. That's definitely enough to get the job done. Yep. It'll work. And it's exact. Yep. It's and that'll be it. Exact amount yep. to KO. Kevin Allen advances to the finals. Yep. And, right. and like I said, in that situation, I mean, if you'd have taken out that RC first, Prowl might not have had enough damage to get through Chop Shop. Yep. Cliff Jumper is the uh, the main man of this tournament, it seems like, or yeah. this top rather. Yep. You think? Well, yeah, I mean, Cliff Jumper two, two different versions. Yeah. Yeah. Top yeah. Four, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's gonna be Cliff Jumper versus Cliff Jumper finals. I want to say at least off the top of my head, there were about five or six in the top thirty-two total. Yeah. There, there, bit, there, yeah. there was a lot. Like, I think Origins top 32 was taken over by Three Wide Optimus. There was, like, yes. I think eight or nine total. It yeah, wasn't there five, five in the top eight? And then five in the top eight, yeah, you know? So, so and yeah. then half the top eight in this uh, tournament was uh, four car variants yep, with Cliff absolutely. Jumper. Absolutely. Yep. Every single one of them had Cliff Jumper. So, yeah. so uh, Blaine's been knocked out in the top four. We've got two competitors left. We've got both. Car mirror match. Car well, car I'm, variant mirror yeah, match. I was saying, I'm actually really, I'm really excited to see uh, two different car variants being in the top eight, yeah. or I'm one, sorry, in the finals. So one player using the kind of breakout cars with the battle master, mm -hmm. and then the other using a more, I don't want to say more innovative, but kind of an innovative uh, four wide deck with cars. Yeah, no, that's really with red alert. We have red alert yeah, from I, the starter yeah. deck in the finals. That, 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 that's pretty impressive. Yeah. So uh, the. Uh, we're gonna get everybody together, and then uh, get to see them at the stream table, and we'll get us watch that finals. finals match. And it's it's just gonna be another two out of three. Yeah, and it does look like it's gonna be another quick match with it being worth first orange. Again, oh yeah, so, yeah. It is. Is there any truth to? Oh sorry. Go ahead. Is there any truth to um, wanting the game to be skewed more towards orange? The the truth is that there's a lot of danger to skewing the game towards blue because then the games don't end. There's no point where a blue battle icon helps you do damage to your opponent, right? Well, the right. orange does. Um, in general, we want Transformers TCG to end around five turns, like a player to have about five turns. This has been a bit faster, but it's aggressive decks versus aggressive decks. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it goes. So uh, it's true that we like seeing the aggression, right? But we, and additionally, I guess to get a little deeper with that, when we make defensive effects, the point isn't to nullify your opponent's plan. It's just to offset it. Okay. To Absolutely. change the tempo yeah. so that you did, you got to do more than what they expected. Right. Okay. We, we, which is why a mixed list is so preferred right now, and we're seeing that it's doing pretty well, is because you still get access to those defensive things while then also being able to go on the offense and, and close the game out. Correct. Right. Definitely. Oh. Uh, I think. Yeah, so. it's the one in the middle. Right, well, this is the first we've streamed one of our organized play events. I hope this is exciting for uh, Transformers TCG fans right now. We don't have access to the chat. If there's any chat, right? Going yeah, yeah, on. yeah. We don't we don't get to answer any chat questions, but maybe maybe next time. Yeah. But I, I'm I'm really happy that we're going in this direction though, because I know that there are tons of people at home who really want to be able to watch and then being able to to be able to live and watch it is is amazing. So absolutely, you know, um, we we uh, we didn't have. A lot of plans for OP organized play when we started, but the player base they wanted it, so we're we're putting it out. This is the second uh, convention event we've had, um, well, one of our larger open events, and this this all culm culminates to a uh, finals event in December with the Energon Open at PAX in yep. yep, which is awesome. And that and, and the rule change you guys did do before this was that the top 32 all get invites versus the top 16. So now we're gonna have access to even more players and great players who are gonna be there. So. Absolutely. Usually uh, what happens is we have kind of feeder events that lead to the open 
uh, which is the championship at the convention, and it's 32 invited players yep. with a single elimination bracket. Normally, in the last event, we invited the top 16 to the Energon Open, but this time we just decided they've all they've all earned it. There's a lot more competitors this time around, so we gave all 32 invites. Yeah, which is awesome. Definitely. So we got a Cars variant mirror match in the finals of GenCon 2019. I, I, I would have never thought about it, to be honest with you. I, I would not have seen this as being the finals for, I don't for see this Optimus event at all. I think that makes it better, 